Good evening. Welcome to Back to School Night. I know this is not the traditional way to do Back to School Night. Um, I have to say I always look forward to seeing parents and getting to talk with them. Uh, so it's a little bit different this year, and I'm not exactly the greatest technology whiz in the world, but I'm going to do my best tonight. So thank you very much for being here or attending. Uh, again, my name is Jeff Price. I've been teaching here at Cacalico for almost 30 years. At this point, I am the oldest member of our department. A um, couple things as we head in into a little bit of a discussion about what we're going to do this year. I just wanted to do a real quick introduction to myself. Um, I graduated from Effort in 1985. Millersville in 1989, uh, started teaching in Cacalico in 1991, and I have been here ever since, and I'm certainly very happy with my job, and I, I do love Cacalico and all the kids that are here. Um, I have three children, um, three boys, two of them are at Temple, the two oldest ones. I also have a senior that's at Warwick High School. Um, my wife Jill and I have lived here since 1996, and uh, Warwick School District. She's a respiratory therapist at Lancaster General, she, so she's been kind of on the front lines of the whole COVID thing, which hopefully we can leave that behind pretty soon. I'm anxious to, to get things back to normal, but um, I teach ninth grade American history normally. I don't have any of those this semester. I also teach AP American history and world studies, which is a class I'm talking about here, and I'm also teaching sociology for the first time. So um, I, I, even though I'm a history guy, um, I love world studies in my first year teaching sociology. I'm really enjoying that too and was kind of looking forward to teaching that for a couple of years now that Wendy Schmidt has retired. It's given me a chance to, to take over with sociology, so I'm pretty excited about that. Um, so um, I, I'm going to click on over, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put us on to um, my syllabus. So I'm going to spend a few minutes kind of go through the syllabus with you a little bit. Um, I do want to point out, keep in mind that if you ever have any questions or your children have any questions, especially at home, um, to message me on Schoology, email me. I really want to keep the, the communication lines open um, and hope that um, everybody feels comfortable doing that. And this is all new for all of us, so uh, I'm certainly very flexible in the way we're doing things. So I'm going to go to a, a different mode here. This might take me a second, so I'm not a tech whiz, but why don't you, if you just bear with me for a minute. Um, So, um, this class is World Studies, so your sons and daughters have had a couple years in a row of American history, which again, I love, but it's a nice uh, thing to do to kind of switch over to a little bit of world history, and I think that world history and culture is a really important thing. I'll talk about that in a minute, but here's the course syllabus. I'm going to highlight a couple things, and uh, again, contact me if you have any questions. There's, of course, the Great Wall of China. Um, this is an introductory course. Obviously, they've had a little bit of world history in the past. I know they've done world religions, Greece and Rome, and some other things here and there through like elementary school and middle school. Um, but this is an introductory course to some major countries, regions, cultures of the world. Um, so we're going to look at geography. We're going to look at history, government, and culture. And I think one thing is that it is pretty important these days. Our world is a smaller place. Um, certainly the internet world travel, television, all those things have really made our world a much smaller place. And I think also a lot more interesting, um, but also forces us to be involved, whether it's through economics, through history, through um, jobs involving uh, the United States diplomacy and things like that. There's a lot of jobs and a lot of connections to the world that we didn't have before. Um, and again, you know, a lot of those things that happen in other countries do touch us I think in ways that maybe they haven't before. So our goal of the course is to develop a knowledge of other cultures so we can better understand them, interact with them, avoid global conflict, increase the standard of living in the world, enjoy the differences in culture and ways of life, which I think is important, and to make the world a better place. So one of the things this wants to do is open their eyes to the world, maybe jobs that um, 
are connected to the world and uh, also make them care and hopefully make the world a better place. And, you know, the United States is is better off when the world is better off. Uh, there's a couple quotes here. I'll just highlight a couple of them. I like Gandhi's very famous one, and we will see the, the movie, the Academy Award winning Gandhi. Uh, he said, an eye for an eye makes the whole world blind. And this was basically his rejection of the idea of revenge. Um, uh, in the world and world events, and we'll get to see uh, Gandhi's attempts at change in, in India. Um, Paul McCartney, I kind of like his quote here because it's very simple and to the point, and I, I say this a lot during class, and sometimes I use the word weird, but I try to tell my kids, try not to use the word weird, but he said, I used to think that anyone doing anything weird was weird. Now I know that those calling others weird are weird. So I liked his. Uh, Jefferson said, Difference of opinion is helpful in religion. Um, Voltaire's quote basically talks about the idea of tolerance, which I think it's a, it's a message for, for a lot of us. Um, the Sioux Indian prayer is probably one most people are kind of familiar with the idea of um, trying to walk in another's shoes or moccasins before they criticize or pass judgment. Um, that's something I think we'll, we'll talk about a lot this year. And Martin Luther King's racial understanding is not something we find. It is something we must create through education. We can create change. And there he is at the Fame March on Washington. So anyway, just to give you a quick highlight of what the course is going to look like. Um, we've gotten through chapter one and two, which is the introduction. It's taken a little longer than 10 days, partially because of COVID, partially because I usually take a little bit longer than 10 days, but that's kind of my goal. So the first chapter, global environment, we hit like what geography is, the five themes of geography. We do some map reading. Um, we touch upon the idea, the concept of culture that they get introduced to. And we also talk about cultural change. Um, the world today is a fast-paced, four-section, 15 pages of world history. And we look at some major events in world history from the birth of man through the Ice Age, um, through the rise of great empires um, and the Industrial Revolution, uh, the concepts of imperialism and nationalism that will play big roles in what we look at this year as we study some of the countries um, this year. And... Um, these are some things that they've studied in the past. So, um, a lot of the themes we're going to look at, there's a lot of connections to American history and it's a, also a nice lead in whether it's the economics and the government to, um, the 11th grade course, which centers on government and also has units on, on economics. So a typical unit will look like this and we're kicking off Africa this week. We have the geography first. They learn a little bit about political and the physical geography of Africa. We also hit some of the early, early history, and then we kind of blend into a little bit of the later history. And that's my dog going nuts over here, Jill. Um, and uh, as we do that, we try to give credit to some of these places that today we look as kind of underdeveloped and um, kind of look at um, like sort of their, their history and figure out maybe some reasons for that. And the European invasion certainly had a lot to do with that. So chapter four hits the Europeans getting here and taking advantage of Africa, um, the concept of imperialism. But we also then look at the independence of these countries, various ways that uh, African countries gain their independence. We talk about protests, boycotts. We talk about physical violence. We talk about out-and-out -out wars. And they learn a little bit about that idea of independence and that fight, which, of course, we had in our own country as well. And then they get their independence. And that's when Africa is in transition. And we look at the formation of governments, the difficulties with that. We look at the economic um, systems as well. We look at um, and think about ideas about dictatorships and democracies, and that kind of leads us into Africa and the world today. So we, they get some current events, what's going on there today, how's Africa doing, what are some of the challenges, and those sorts of things. And I'm not going to take you through the rest of the syllabus, but um, just to point out that some things we're going to do, uh, the format's kind of the same. I usually do about a test every two chapters, so the bigger units like Africa, South Asia, the Middle East do get uh, a couple tests. 
Um, Geography and early history of South Asia, heritage kind of looks the same, South Asia in transition, South Asia in the world today. Focus in that unit is a lot on India. We also look at Pakistan, Afghanistan, uh, Bangladesh, um, smaller looks at Nepal, Bhutan, Sri Lanka and places like that. So Hinduism is a major theme. That's where we learn about that religion. And we also get into Islam, of course, with Pakistan and Afghanistan. Um, China, excuse me, and Japan both get two chapters because they're only one country. So, of course, China, the big thing is um, Mao Zedong and communism, but also some of the early history is pretty fascinating and lays a bit of a foundation in some ways for modern uh, China. And then geography and heritage of Japan, which... Um, We'll probably finish off the year with Japan because usually what I'll do is the Middle East uh, after Africa. A couple reasons I do it that way. Number one, Middle East history is not easy. Uh, there's a lot of subtleties you have to know. It's certainly a hot button topic and issue. Uh, and we want to learn the insides and outs of that. So I don't want to go to the end of the year when we're end of the year mode working pretty fast. At the same time, the kids are slowing down. Um, but there's a lot of interesting things in there. Um, lots of videos that I'm going to use this year. Um, we do some feature length films. We do uh, Cry Freedom, which is this, the story of Stephen Biko's death at the hands of the South African government. Um, we will do um, Gandhi. Um, we will do um, a number of, uh, each unit has uh, a unique look at that country today. Um, it's India revealed, Africa revealed, um, Middle East revealed. So there's a series there. There's also some great uh, National Geography or National Geographic videos as well um, that we will use. So that's kind of a quick look at that. Um, Oh, Hotel Rwanda is the other one that we do for Africa. I didn't want to forget that. And some bits and pieces of some other ones along the way as well. I'm not going to spend time really too much on homework policy tonight because as it sort of turns out, um, I, I don't know if we're going to have a ton of stuff that's labeled specifically as homework. With students working at home, they work at their own pace. They just have to get the work done when they get done. And I certainly understand the idea that there are... Um, 10 more minutes in every class period and I do use the entire class period with the exception of a kind of a five minute break uh, from masks in which we try to go outside or walk around the room stretch our legs a little bit um, but I did want you to know that um, I do grade a lot of things and number one kind of highlights the idea the importance of doing the study guide and the textbook so every chapter they have a review sheet uh, and an objective sheet that lets them know what they need to know. They have a study guide. They are expected to read the textbook and answer the questions that go along with it. And their effort in doing the textbook, which isn't super challenging, um, if your child struggled with the American history textbook, they should find the World Studies one um, a decent amount easier this year. But they cannot come to class not being prepared. And the basis of the daily lessons are the content that goes on in there. With the idea of students only in class two days a week, there'll be less of a regular defined like lesson and lecture uh, on those topics. So that means it's up to them to do some of that work on their own. I'd like to save the time that I'm with them to really um, discuss the issues in history and some projects and writing and things like that. But if you want to check out um, the uh, power school already, we have a lot of grades in there already. And um, I do grade a lot, and I think it's important that kids are assessed a lot. Having said that, I've kind of waived my late policy, at least for right now. Kids have responded very well. Most kids have kept up. Um, there's a couple reasons that I've kind of thrown the late policy out the door. The only one I'd really share with you right now, and that's the idea that um, some kids with issues with technology, but please encourage them to send a, a Schoology message, email, whatever they can do. And I think there'll be a little bit more of a connection now that we will be using um, Google Meet on a more regular basis. So other than that, we don't have flex or focus at the end of the day. Um, basic grading there, I would say. Um, probably as far as points for a marking period, it's usually about maybe 40% test and the rest are other activities which include writings and things like that. There's a list of the major films we'll do. There's some document-based essays using photographs, 
things like that, a couple of the topics listed there. By the way, the course syllabus is posted as the first item in their class, so they can always show you that. I think Food and Culture Day, we probably won't be able to do that one this year, which I always enjoy doing, but they'll also do some speaking in class, including a more formal speech on various topics in South, South Asia. And there's just a kind of a general breakdown. Uh, of that. Okay. Hey, I would like to thank all, as my dog goes racing up and down the hall, um, I'm going to come back here for a minute. And I just want to thank all of you for tuning in tonight. And again, encouraging if you have, ever have any questions to please reach out and let me know. Thanks again for tuning in. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Hold on.